Thank you. If everyone wishes to, please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Tom Clerk, Carol, could we have a roll call, please? Certainly. Supervisor Ronald McGreevy? Here. Councilman Reginald Decito? Here. Councilman James Rogers? Here. Councilman Ken Sutterby? Here. Councilman Thomas Thompson? Here. Thank you, Carol. We've got a roll call. The quorum is present. Uh, at this time, I would like to introduce the attorneys and engineers uh, with us this evening. Uh, we have uh, our Mr. Charles Schaefer representing the town of Tyre this evening, and we also have attorney Tom Blair uh, by telephone. Before uh, we open the public hearing, I would like to take this opportunity to note that one year ago, on June 20th, 2019, we held our first official Tire Town Board meeting in this building. As I stated at that time, this was an historic event for the town of Tyre. For the first time in Tyre's 190 year history, we had a municipal building of our own in which day-to-day -to -day town business could be conducted. It is now no longer necessary for town officials to work from the kitchens or spare bedrooms in their homes, as was done in the past. A lot has happened in our world since June of 2019. I am certain that we will eventually recover from the effects of the coronavirus pandemic, and I hope that efforts will continue to be made to address the issues of social unrest currently gripping our nation. Let's make an effort to work together and not see tolerance, understanding, patience, and common sense placed on the endangered species list. Thank you. We still have a little over a minute before we can officially open the public hearing, so um, we'll have to hold off on that for just a minute or so. Okay, my clock says 6.35. We'll have a motion to open the public hearing regarding proposed approval of an amended and restated site plan in regards to a proposed Del Lago pylon sign. Would someone care to make that motion? Motion. Motion from Mr. Sutterby. Second. Second from Mr. Thompson. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? So moved. Before we get into the um, public comment portion, I would ask Mr. Vars of BME Associates representing LAGO to give us a brief synopsis uh, regarding this uh, pylon sign application. Mr. Vars, thank you for coming this evening. Do you need them? Do you want to see a map? Uh, I don't need to see. We've, we've seen the map many times. Yeah. Someone would like to see it again. <laughs> We have a microphone there on the table. If you could use that, please, we appreciate that. So, uh, good evening. My name is Peter Vars with BME Associates on behalf of Del Lago. Um, yeah, just a brief overview. Uh, it's ironic you mentioned one year ago uh, opening this new building. It was actually three years ago. 
June 15, 2017, we were here and received the original site plan approval, or I should say, at that, again, that was an amended site plan approval to allow the installation of a pylon sign for Del Lago Casino uh, along the New York State Thruway. Um, since that time, uh, that, that approval expired. Uh, however, Del Lago is looking to move forward with constructing that same pylon sign that was approved back in 2017. But because that uh, site plan approval expired, it does require us to come back uh, to obtain uh, the, the reapproval. But one thing also to identify, and it is why we need the amended and restated site plan approval, is the location that was approved in 2017 has changed from what we're requesting now. Uh, we're requesting the sign is going to be located about 1,200 feet further to the west. It's really in the area, if you recall, where the old Drumlin was. That is where the sign would be located. That is the optimum location for the sign based on the east-west travel patterns, but back in 2017, we couldn't put it there because the drum was there. Nobody wanted it elevated that high. So that is part of this application, is acknowledging that location has, uh, has changed. The other thing I would tell you since 2017, they do have in hand, and I know it's been provided to Code Enforcement Office, uh, they do have their permit from the New York State Thruway Authority. Uh, even though it's on private property because of the size and its proximity, uh, the Thruway Authority had to issue a permit uh, mm -hmm. for that, and that is in hand and that's been provided. So that's that's the update we're here to give you this evening. Okay, thank you. Any questions for Mr. Bard? Thank you, sir. Okay, so we'll move on to comments. For those wishing to speak at this public hearing this evening, uh, are to be limited to the proposed approval of an amended and restated site plan in regards to a proposed Del Lago pylon site, sign, excuse me, which is the sole topic of this public hearing. The board will hear comments and questions only and will give consideration to them in its decision-making process. The board will also take written comments for consideration and will place those comments into the record. All speakers shall come up to the podium and state their name, where they reside for the record. And in addition, anyone listening on the phone this evening may also comment. That being said, is there anyone who would like to address the board with comments specific to the proposed approval of an amended and restated site plan in regards to a proposed Del Lago pylon sign? Anyone on listening on the phone would like to comment? Again, is there any comment? If there are no comments, I would entertain a motion to close this public hearing. Motion. Motion from Mr. Aceto. Second. Second from Mr. Sutterby. Uh, Rogers, Mr. Rogers, I'm sorry. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? So moved. Next, we can move right on to our regular monthly Tire Town Board meeting. And the first thing uh, that we will address will be approval of the minutes of May 21st, 2020. Has everyone had a chance to review the minutes of May 21st, 2020? Are there any additions or corrections? If not, I would entertain a motion to dispense with the reading of the minutes and approve them as written. Motion. Motion from Mr. Sutterby. Second. Second from Mr. Thompson. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? So moved. We have no scheduled speakers this evening. So we'll move on to department reports. Town Clerk, Carol, do you have anything for us? I do not have anything. Thank you, ma'am. Highway Department. Uh, I spoke with Highway Superintendent Eddington, and he relayed to me the progress is being made on Near Pass Road rehabilitation. Mowing has been conducted. Uh, highway Department is still filling potholes. Our new 10-wheel truck is still in the process of being prepared. Hopefully we'll see that soon. 
and he also wanted to mention that he is uh, looking at uh, issues for the 2021 highway budget requests for uh, road improvements. Next, we'll move on to the town assessor, Mr. Griswold provided me with a very brief report. He says, I only have one item to report. The grievance day was held on May 26th, and we had one petitioner. Other than that, business as usual. Attorney, Mr. Schaefer, do you have anything for us? I have nothing. Thank you, sir. Fire Department, Chief Reynolds, do you have anything for us? Yes, I do. Thank you, Mr. President Grieby. Since the uh, coronavirus, we did see a decrease of calls. Just this past month, we've seen a dramatic increase of calls. So I think that the call volume is more balancing out than they were last year. On June 1st, we new trade to Rivals for a structure fire. On June 6th, we a new trade to Juniors for a track trailer fire. On June 9th, we to the Essenberg Trails over here on uh, East Tire Road for a uh, heroin overdose. Male subject, not breathing. Uh, no pulse. With assistance uh, from Deputy Sheriff Deputy John McNatt and our men and women, we were able to evaluate the show again. Uh, heroin overdose has increased in Senate County. In fact, on the way here this evening, there's a report of a heroin overdose in the village of Waterloo. So heroin overdose is, uh, is around. It's in our communities uh, across the state and across the uh, country as well. And that's all I have for the period. Thank you, sir. Uh, zoning enforcement officer, uh, Mr. Reynolds, you're up again. Yes, sir. Uh, we issued three permits since the last meeting. Ms. Piscatelli is putting up a enclosed porch on uh, Blackbrook Road. Uh, Danielle Morell is uh, putting on an um, addition to his porch, his existing porch. Dan Rand is putting on a small porch uh, on his house as well. We did receive a couple other uh, applications for permits, but uh, there's some information that was missing, so. We kind of give it back to the applicant waiting for more information to process those uh, two additional permits. Uh, last month, we, our correction just saw this current month, June 8th, we held a uh, planning board meeting. And we did the Burke Holder Seeker review when it was passed by the uh, planning board. We'll just step closer to uh, close out Mr. Burke Holder's project. Uh, there's some store, some loose ends still we have to work on, but uh, we're going to uh, hopefully do that in the next couple of weeks. Uh, the planning board will be holding a uh, subdivision public hearing next Tuesday at 6.30 regarding a subdivision from the Michael Smucker property up on uh, Rose Tire Road. Most project is still um, underway, and that will come before the uh, planning board next week as well. Uh, as I said, uh, the blood project is moving forward. Uh, a lot of work being done uh, between uh, attorney Tom Blair, engineer Mike Simon, myself, and chairman uh, Bob Seen. Yes, he spent over an hour on the conference call. We have some uh, loose ends, uh, but it is moving forward, and we're looking forward uh, to him coming to our town. As you see on the corner of 414 and 318, the Sussers property, known as the 3S Gateway property, they're doing some grading to their property. They're looking to do that to uh, hopefully get ready for future developments as they come down the pipeline. And we're just doing a lot of uh, site inspections throughout the town. A lot of things going on, a lot of uh, meetings and things regarding love projects, some other projects that are going on in the town, so we've been really busy. And that's why I have some President Grieving. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Next, move on to planning uh, website and training. Uh, planning Board Chairman Seam has provided a detailed report. I will read portions of it. Uh, first, he states the planning board meeting scheduled for May 28th had to be canceled because of a scheduling error. Uh, and it was uh, rescheduled and conducted on June 8th. A uh, public hearing was conducted at that time to hear any comment on an amended site plan for construction of a distillery warehouse at Montezuma Winery. And later in that meeting, the amended site plan was approved. Uh, during the public comment period, Mr. Mike Ritchie from Cottage Engineering, representing 3S Gateway, informed the board that earthwork was planned for the 3S Gateway site to approve drainage and uh, upon questioning, there was some confusion about the plan and the drawings before the meeting. So as town engineer, our town engineer, Mike Simon, was not at the meeting, uh, we, requ we requested that he be consulted. 
Uh, on June 11th, Mr. Ritchie submitted revised drawings to Mr. Simon, who concurred that work did not represent any action that required planning board approval. Old business at the last planning board uh, is back to the Burkholder subdivision, site plan and seeker. Um, and at that meeting, seeker for the project was completed and it was declared no negative environmental impact. And the board will continue with the subdivision and site plan. Uh, by unanimous motion, the planning board recommended the town board appoint Mr. Douglas E. Jones of 2163 Westbrook Road, Seneca Falls to the position of alternate planning board member. The planning board was not able to identify a new member for the Zoning Board of Appeals at this time. New business, the planning board reviewed the proposed addition of footnote number eight to the bulk table for the commercial west zone and by unanimous motion recommended this change to the tire zoning law of 2018. A minor subdivision application was received from Richard and Gail Banks purchased 10 acres of land from a subdivided parcel owned by Michael and Rebecca Schmucker, and the application was accepted, and a public hearing will be held on June 23rd, 2020. Planning Board also noticed a public hearing for June 23rd, 2020 to start the seeker, subdivision, and site plan review process for the Loves Travel Center. Our training facilitator, Mr. Kessel, reports that quarterly individual training status reports will be issued to members, planning board, and zoning board of appeals chairs for the first half of 2020. And as always, we thank the members of the planning board, men and women of the planning board, for all of their hard work. Next, move on to the dog control officer. Uh, DCO Dallin Jenkins uh, reports that uh, there were no calls in the town of Tyre to address for this month. Next, we move on to bookkeeping. Mr. Gross, what do you have for us? Uh, thank you, Supervisor McGreevy. Uh, not too much to report, but uh, now that uh, the 2017-2018 audits have been finalized, we will be moving on to the 2019 audit of the town books. Uh, I've already been contacted by the firm uh, Raymond F. Wagger CPA and their auditing team uh, requesting documents. Uh, so we'll be starting work on the 2019 audit in the near future. I have the uh, usual handouts for the board uh, and they were placed up on the uh, OneDrive and the link was shared with the board. The abstract of audited vouchers number five uh, which covers the bills that were approved for payment on May 21st at the town board meeting. Uh, the supervisor's monthly report and combined financial statements for April 2020 and the associated trial balance summaries uh, for April were also uploaded. The supervisor's monthly report and combined financial statements for May 2020 and the associated trial balance summaries uh, for May were included. So at this point I've uh, uh, finally caught up with the books and we're uh, dealing with the previous month's uh, financial statements. And uh, that's all I had. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I know you have a lot on your plate, for sure. Next, we'll go to the band hall committee. Is there anything to report from the band hall committee? Nothing new to report. Thank you, sir. Building committee. Is there anything to report from the building committee? Nothing. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Highway committee. Uh, the only thing to report at this time is to carry out a proposed meeting with the highway superintendent concerning the 21 budget. I would request uh, the members of the highway committee uh, also to uh, revisit options to provide water to the highway department building. Sure. That's something that uh, we can take a look at again. Perhaps uh, you know, give us some options with some cost estimates. Okay. Thank you. Next, move on to old business. Um, Spectrum Charter Communications update. We are very close to having the franchise agreement finalized. Um, I would like to schedule a public hearing to be held at the Tire Municipal Building, uh, 1082 Gravel Road, Seneca Falls, 13148, on July 16th at uh, 635 
p.m. to enter into a cable television franchise with Spectrum Northeast LLC, an indirect subsidiary of Charter Communications. Would anyone care to move that resolution to schedule a public hearing? Motion. Motion from Mr. Aceto. Second. Second from Mr. Rogers. Is there any discussion? See if there's no discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? So moved. Is there any other old business? As there's no old business, we'll move right on to new business. And the first thing we have there is a resolution of the town board of the town of Tyre regarding the amended and restated site and development plan application of Del Lago Resort and Casino LLC for the construction of a pylon sign. This is a rather lengthy resolution. I will read it. Or if there's no objection, we can dispense with the reading of the text. Make a motion where you dispense with the reading of the the text, okay? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? So moved. So again, this is a resolution of the town board of the town of Tyre regarding the amended and restated site and development plan application of Del Lago Resort and Casino LLC for the construction of a pylon sign. Would someone care to move this resolution? Motion. Second. A motion from Mr. Sutterby and a second from Mr. Rogers. Is there any discussion? I think there's no discussion. We'll have a roll call vote on this. Mr. Aceto? Aye. Mr. Rogers? Yes. Mr. Sutterby? Yes. Mr. Thompson? Yes. Oh, yes as well. That resolution is adopted. Thank you, Mr. Byers. Thank you all. Have a very good evening. Take care all. Next, we have a resolution appointing Douglas E. Jones to the Town of Tyre Planning Board, alternate member to fill an unexpired term ending December 31st, 2026. Whereas there exists a vacancy on the Town of Tire Planning Board alternate member, and whereas the Town of Tire Planning Board meeting on June 8, 2020, unanimously recommended appointing Douglas E. Jones to fill this current vacancy. Therefore, be it resolved that Douglas E. Jones is hereby appointed to fill the current vacancy on the Town of Tire Planning Board alternate member. This appointment is to fill the unexpired term, which shall end December 31st, 2026. Would someone care to move that? Motion. Motion from Mr. Aceto. Is there a second? Second. A second from Mr. Thompson. Is there any discussion? Seeing there's no discussion, we'll have a roll call vote. Mr. Thompson? Yes. Mr. Sutterby? No. Mr. Aceto? Yes. Mr. Rogers? No. I vote yes. That resolution is adopted. <coughs> Next, we have a resolution acknowledging and accepting the findings of the 2017 audit. Uh, Mr. Aceto, would you? Care to read that resolution? I certainly can do that. All right, hopefully we got the right one. Uh, I'll try to speak loud with no speaker. Resolution acknowledging and accepting the findings of the 2017 audit of the Town of Tyre's financial statements and books performed by the CPA firm of Raymond F. Wager, CPA PC, a division of Mangold, Metzger, and Barr and Company. LLP, whereas the CPA firm of Raymond F. Wagger, CPA PC, was hired by the Town of Tyre in March of 2019 to perform an audit of the town's 2017 financial statements, books, records, procedures, and internal controls, and whereas the firm of Raymond F. Wagger, CPA PC, performed an audit of the 2017 
Town's financial statements, books, records, procedures, and internal controls, which audit began in May of 2019 and concluded in April 2020. And whereas on May 7, 2020, the town received the final copies of the 2017 audit results, which included one, basic financial statements for year ended December 31st, 2017, two, letter of communication for the year ended December 31st, 2017, three, communicating internal control related matters identified in an audit for the year ended December 31st, 2017. Now via resolved, the Town of Tyre acknowledges receipt of the final audit reports for the 2017 audit and accepts the findings therein. Thank Motion. You. Motion from Mr. Aceto. Second. Second from Mr. Rogers. Is there any discussion? Seeing there no discussion, we'll have a roll call vote. Mr. Thompson? Yes. Mr. Aceto? Aye. Mr. Rogers? Yes. Mr. Sutterby? Yes. Oh, yes, as well, that resolution is adopted. Next, we'll move on to a resolution acknowledging and accepting the findings of the 2018 audit. Mr. Sutterby, have you care to read that one? Yes, sir. Uh, June 18, 2020, resolution acknowledging and accepting the findings. Oh, that's not it. Sorry, I'm writing on the job. Uh, June 18, 2020 resolution acknowledging and accepting the findings of the 2018 audit of the Town of Tyler's financial statements and books performed by the CPA firm of William and Dick Weber, CPA, DC, a division of Menko, Metzler, Bar, and Company, LLP. Whereas the CPA firm of Raymond F. Weber, CPA, PC, was hired by the Town of Tyler in March of 2019 to perform an audit of the Town's 2018 financial statements, books, records, procedures, and internal controls. And whereas the firm of Raymond F. Weber, CPA, PC, performed an audit of the 2018 Town's financial statements, books, records, procedures, and internal controls, which audit began in May 2019 and concluded in April 2020. And whereas on May 7, 2020, the town received the final copies of the 2018 audit results, which included one, basic financial statements for year ended December 31st, 2018, two, letter of communication for the year ended December 31st, 2018. Now, it be it resolved, the Town of Tyre acknowledges receipt of the final audit reports for the 2018 audit and accepts the findings thereof. Thank you. Motion. I have a motion for Mr. Sutter. Second. Second from Mr. Thompson. Is there any discussion? If there's no discussion, we'll have a roll call vote. Mr. Thompson? Yes. Mr. Aceto? Aye. Mr. Rogers? Yes. Mr. Sutter? Yes. And vote yes as well. That resolution is adopted. Next, we'll move on to a resolution introducing proposed local law number one of 2020, amending the Town of Tyre zoning law and scheduling a public hearing. Again, this is a rather lengthy resolution. If there is no objection, we can dispense with the reading of the entire text. Is there any objection? I have no objection. No. Seeing there's no objection, again, we will address Town of Tyre resolution introducing proposed local law number one of 2020, amending the Town of Tyre zoning law and scheduling a public hearing on proposed local law number one of 2020. Would someone care to move that resolution? Motion. A motion from Mr. Sutterby. Can I get a second? Second. Second from Mr. Thompson. Is there any discussion? Yes, I think there's a bit of discussion here. Um, what exactly are we proposing to allow them to do? What we are proposing, what is being proposed is uh, in addition to the uh, commercial west zoning district bulk table, adding a number eight, which would state the planning board when reasonable to do so, 
may waive or vary any requirements, regulations, and or bulk standards which may apply to parking and or sign requirements or regulations contained within the entire zoning law with regards to parcels of land located in the Commercial West C1 Zoning District, which also abut or adjoin New York State Route 90, the throughway. So my concern is, uh, okay, they, as I understand it, they could decrease the requirements. But as I also understand that they could increase the requirements. I think, of course, that's a true statement. But I think we have to have a little faith in our planning board uh, to make the right decision. Um, right now, with the projects we have before us, um, we would need a, a number of variances, something we probably should be addressing in the future of looking to uh, enact maybe a number of amendments uh, well, the zoning if, if this current zoning law is inappropriate, uh, isn't there a better way to attack this? We could go through the a, a redo of the zoning law, which would take us months. months, if not a year, which took us a year or two years to uh, come up with this uh, zoning law. Do we have a project before us now? Understood. Fair and point. Yes, sir, Mr. Rosito. Um, I'm just curious what the problem is that we're trying to solve. Um, so I, I look at this and I see a resolution. You usually try to solve problems that are in front of a board. Um, I'm not sure what the problem is. Um, it sounds like it's in the zoning board. But this resolution, to me, is using a sledgehammer to put a nail in a wall. Um, it's pretty broad. So if there's issues with the law, and it sounds like there is, um, I just feel before I could support this that I would know what those issues are, there might be a better way. This just seems eminently broad of exactly the way the text is written. It's pretty broad. Um, and as we worked on the, the zoning code, or the zoning op code, um, we understood that there's going to be changes in, in thought and uh, possibly mistakes, and we put in an amendment process in order to handle that. Um, when you have a when you have the person trying to do what they're doing being the same people that are determining that it's reasonable, I don't see the check and balance. Um, a bank robber would determine robbing a bank is reasonable. He needs the money. Um, this so decision, Mr. Rosito, will be made by the southern members of our planning board, not the developer. Very, yeah, and so we worked on the town board worked on the zoning board on the zoning law because that's the power that was given to us at New York State. The zoning board follows the directives that come out of the zoning law. Um, this is just too broad of a power that I think is giving power that is invested in us to encapsulate in the zoning law um, to them and what's reasonable to one group of zoning people might be unreasonable to the next zoning people. Um, who determines what's reasonable? The board that is today, or the board that is yesterday, or the board that is tomorrow? And I'm not sure of those answers. This application comes before our town planning board, Mr. Rosito. They have the authority and obligation to review this, not the town board. I think we have to have a little faith in our planning board. Again, we can go through another rewrite of the, our zoning law to address a number of issues that we should be addressing that will take us close to a year and jeopardize a project that we have before us right at the moment that will, by this resolution, will allow our planning board members to use their judgment to waive certain minor issues that will not require going through the variance process, multiple variance processes, which ultimately more than likely would be granted, or 
again, a rewrite of the zoning law, which could take up to a year. So, I'm still curious about what these issues are. I've been to many planning board meetings, and there's several issues with this. And, it, and, it, and it's just minor little things that has to go towards the ZBA. And it's just holding projects up, which we need in this town. Yeah. Agreed. And I think we all yeah. agree to that subject. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think understand that your point of view also. But I, I don't know if we need to. I wouldn't like to have to go another whole year and lose this project or other projects. Yeah, I'm curious. I think a year is just a long time. I mean, if we were going to rewrite the entire zoning law, absolutely, I think it would be a year to fix what Mr. Rogers said as our minor, and I think I don't think you use the term nuisances, um, but minor nuances in the law that need to be addressed. If that takes a year, I think there's a problem with the process of approving this. Um, it shouldn't take a year. It should take about the same amount of time it would ta take to pass this, just but with a little bit more thought and a little bit more clarity. Um, this is a local law. The changes that we would have to change to the specific minor things that Jimmy Rogers has, has mentioned, they both go through the same exact process. I don't see how one can take a month and the other one can take a year. When we went through the zoning law, it took two years or more. And then when you get done, it still wasn't right. Now, how long is it going to take to, how many years is it going to take to redo this whole thing all over again? It, is, it just seems that it maybe it should be specific to it, which it is specific to a certain area in the zoning law. In there would be a certain area of the C1, I believe, of the zoning law. Yeah. It's that specific area. It's not the whole law. I'm it's still every zoning. Zone. I'm still curious. What are these issues that? I mean, I don't. I haven't heard one yet, and I'm just. I'm curious. Parking and signage. Parking lots, signage, those are some of the issues that I've been made aware of. I don't know if Mr. Blair is still on the phone. No. Yeah, I am. Okay. Is there anything you'd like to comment on, Mr. Blair? Well, I, I, would, I would say to the board that the language that was selected was carefully selected to include the word reasonable so that the planning board doesn't have sole discretion. By inserting the word reasonable, the planning board, to make sure it's not being arbitrary or capricious, must uphold uh, reasonable standards, which the average planning board, given the same set of circumstances, would be thinking is a logical and plausible and safe uh, waiver to give to any applicants. And I would suggest to the board that currently you have IHOP in the, on the Petro property and the Loves project on the other side of the road that both may, may need multiple variances and currently the Loves project would be facing over 20 variances, not because of mistakes in the zoning code, just certain design parameters. For example, heat islands on the truck side um, that would break up the pavement with landscaping when trucks uh, need room to turn, room to move, snow plows need to be able to get through there without curving, without heat islands. Um, pilot uh, wants to have a sign, um, excuse me, not pilot, IHOP wants to have a sign that's higher than normal. Um, and, and in discussion with the various applicants, with the zoning enforcement officer, with different members of the planning board and the town board, one thing became clear is that, is that, that there was a general consensus, and I think you'll recall this from the days of the Zoning Advisory Committee, that the properties that are located directly abutting the throughway probably could withstand for secret purposes and site planning purposes a little more signage, uh, a little more parking, a little more busyness, a little more commercial um, than the rest of the properties in the town. That's why when all of these issues um, between what might be occurring in Petro and what, what might be occurring in the Loves Project, and generally in that district, we're not trying to we're not trying to fix a problem for any one applicant. Applicant. This is more of a district section. So you would take the Sessler's property and you would go all the way through the.
property directly across and north of Pineview Circle, and those would be the affected properties. And um, I don't disagree with Mr. Macedo's comments that there could be time spent to put tweaks here and there. Um, I think the difficulty, as you look at it tonight, is that there's a lot of wheels turning. And, um, and if you folks want to spend the time to start working through the zoning code and the bulk standards and start to make adjustments, I think that's a super endeavor. Um, it will definitely slow things down in the town that are occurring right now. And um, I'd be happy to comment on anything else if there's any questions. Um, yeah, I'm just curious. I can't find Heat Island in the zoning law. Yeah, you have to take a look at the diagrams that are cited by the law, section 188 and beyond. Yeah, I, I moved the table. I think that's a mistake. We've got a project, a multi-million dollar project before us right now, but I think we need to move forward. We've had a motion to table. Mr. Rogers? There's no second. Yeah, we need a second. You're right, guy. You're right. Is there a second? I've got a question before I want to make a second. I'd be interested in hearing a little different language. I appreciate your time frame. I appreciate what you're saying. I appreciate the planning board lessening the requirements. What I'm not interested in is the planning board increasing the requirements. Is there a language around that, Mr. Blair? Not easily. Um, when you when you when you're going to allow a planning board, so you have the same kind of language in your site plan review, local law, where the planning board can waive standards, um, can adjust standards as long as it's reasonable to do so. Um, it, it, you have it in your site plan review, local law, um, and I think here, if you want to do some more work on language, you can. Um, setting certain thresholds would not be easy because there are over 20 variances being sought. I don't know, Craig, if you recall, but it might be closer to, to 27 possible variances that are needed. Um, it's a fair amount of work to be done, and I would say to you that what's in front of you tonight is the um, is, is, it has a reasonable standard in it, so there are certain um, safeguards. Uh, they can't go off anything in their, in their sole discretion. It has to be based on reason and logic. Um, uh, Mr. Blair, how is that important? be lowered, um, there's 20 different matters that you have to address a lot of different concerns, Ken. Uh, sir, how is that enforced, the reasonable standard? I don't know that he heard you. Mr. Blair? Mr. Blair, a question has been asked, uh, how would the reasonable, language reasonable be enforced? I think we lost the line. I think we did. Okay, we've got a motion to the table. There's gonna be a second for that. I do not wish to uphold any projects. I've always been a pro project. Right now, with uh, Lago uncertainty and the town of Tyre looking at a serious shortfall in revenue, I think we need to certainly do everything possible to work with these developers to move this project forward. This law concerns only the commercial west. Correct. Right. Just what it best the throughway. Yeah. So one of the things I propose is that we meet with the loves people. We look at as a town board and a planning board what the issues are and resolve. And then it's done for everyone. It's on a fair standard and everybody can look at the standard, understand it, and be able to abide by it. And maybe some things 
as I haven't heard major. Nobody's talked major. I hear minor. Minor can be fixed a lot easier than major. We're not throwing this zoning law into the garbage and starting from scratch. We're fixing small things. And, and if it's 20, I'd like to know what one of the 20 are. You said lighting and parking, but that's pretty vague. It, it what also, is the specific issues that we're running into? It also causes a lot of Let's say conflict with the, with the developer. Jim, can you use your microphone? They just, I see them just act like we're done. I watch them propose things and then they get all these questions and all these roadblocks and it acts like they're, they're going to throw the project out. And I don't want that. I'm sorry, but that's the way I feel. Oh, yeah, I, I would like to smooth the road so that they, that they move as fast as they can, but in an appropriate way. I don't want to. I don't want to make a bad law to accomplish a good thing. Again, the site plan approval process is the responsibility of the planning board, not this board. Understand that. Oh, I, well, that's it. absolutely. The, the planning board implements the, the zoning law that is prepared and approved by the town board. The planning board does not make law. They implement the law that is passed by the town board. And all of this resolution and this proposed local law is allowing the planning board some flexibility with certain issues along the throughway in the commercial west district as opposed to a rewrite of the zoning law to address 20 possible variances. I believe, as I stated previously, we need to have some faith in our planning board. If we don't have faith in our planning board, I don't know where we're going as a town board. I might take exception that you're sort of saying that people on this board don't have faith in the town board. That's what I'm hearing, Mr. Aceto. Uh, well, I don't know how. I'm just trying to make good law, sir. Okay. All right, well, we've had, we've had a motion to table. Is there a second? Seeing there's no second, we had a motion and a second on this resolution. I don't know what you mean, but we are more. Is there any more discussion? Seeing there's no more discussion, on the roll call vote, Mr. Thompson? No. Mr. Sutterby? No. Mr. Rogers? Yes. Mr. Aceto? No. The resolution has failed. Board that went unanswered or unaddressed. 
for example, on the first one, Mr. Justin House, I believe that is the one that I responded directly to him by letter, and I believe the zoning code enforcement officer also responded to him. So I just want the board to think that this is a pending matter that has been responded to. I don't know what if, and I think the, the second one is for purposes of notification only, didn't require a response. Is that That's correct, okay. yes. I mean, I can read, I can read the letter no, if you'd like. The, the they're, third, they're just the, making us aware that right. uh, the town of Tyre has been identified as an uh, interested agency, and if we right. have any comments to make to the New York State Canal Corporation, we are uh, right. entitled to do so. Well, I just wanted to distinguish between one matters that you received that are what I would call notification matters, and matters that you received that requested some response. And those that requested that required some response, I just wanted the board to know that the responses were made. The third one having to do with communication from Alice Covert, uh, that is one that was considered at length in a meeting that I took part in. And as a result of that meeting, uh, a invitation was sent to various uh, individuals in the McGee Volunteer Fire Department, Inc., and, uh, as, and um, tire officials regarding uh, an informational meeting that is scheduled, I believe, for June the 29th at 6.30? That's correct. Okay, so that has, it's in the process. It hasn't been addressed, but the meeting's been scheduled. And uh, the last one, again, is just a notification one that doesn't require a response. Thank you, Mr. Schaefer. Yes. Any other business to come before this board? If not, we can pay our bills.
And the more I played with it, the more I found. Yeah. Did you see the way that was in your case there? Yeah, no. Uh, the passwords all in there. Oops. Well, that shows you how much time I spent with it. Yeah.
was in March. Mm -hmm. So we got in 2019, yeah. so March of 2020. So was there a possibility yeah. that I'm staying for year five? I know we want to do a world. Do we have to pay more or do anything to is it big, big speed done? up the process? So it's, it's not like we're trying to fix problems. Oh, okay. Okay. Years years. Okay. Yeah, we'll yeah. see. Yeah. We're uh, mm -hmm. trying to get this caught up. Time is a lot of things. At least maybe yeah. not as relevant. Three years later, you had changed personnel. I mean, it's, you know, yeah. the city. Yeah. So yeah. we can her an 18 Is she our bad guy yet? Oh, yeah. Is she actually the Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, she's still close to the books. We have to close the books. That's all I said. Yeah. And how many money is on what we have? In order to open up the new year, you couldn't start the new year without closing. I said, really, so I'm not even playing. Now, they should have the roads I heard. Yeah. But three years later, you don't even remember what the hell you did. Yeah. You know? yeah. Oh. It makes it tough. Yeah. Well, I guess so. There's no one here that they were moving to their offices. No, you were saying I probably got to see the best of bar. We got it. So I like, thought so like you get a, a crash insurance for me. Yeah. yeah. No, they sound like they should have to be. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think we did a lot of times. So you can uh, break that, you know? Yeah. Hmm. Well, I had to say that when you were once, because I should have not been wrong, and I didn't realize I had one notch lower. Oh, never yeah, 60 or something. I don't know what I can play. So I didn't want to break it. Okay, he did go get his license or two men should say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, oh, yeah. I guess she kid that you know, he was like 13 back in the trailer, but you wouldn't believe it. Just, I can't do that. It's amazing. Too bad. Gotta be to keep him out of trouble. Really. He's getting me left foot. He's a little trouble. Oh, 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 so just say two minutes he's gonna do it. Yeah. 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 Oh, it's very incredibly good situation. But there are you stuff no well I can start here and figure it's I do it. Well I got his homework nailed down. Got it all done? Oh you're living with your night out or night out of my kid. Oh, that would be tough. Yeah. Well, he was great. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
don't think that would be my favorite. Well, you know, he's very much split. Yeah, well, yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah, nice shirt. Yeah. I think it expires at the end of June. The 20th expires. Um, Microsoft Teams, I don't think we're on like Office 365. Microsoft Teams does a decent job. They up their game. Well, Zoom, really? yeah. Zoom is 10 trillion times better than, than WebEx. Zoom WebEx, yeah. yeah. Zoom. At least look into it. They had a little bit of trouble that um, they designed it to be for ease of use, so the security was a little bit horrible. Yeah. 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 It was being used for was not my stuff that shouldn't have been. Uh, motion to pay the bills. Sir. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? So move. Got a motion to adjourn. Motion. Second. Motion from Mr. Sutterby and a second from Mr. Rogers. And we're adjourned at uh, 748. Oh, what can you do? Yeah, never mind. I haven't done it. I think it's on this computer. Oh, okay. Yeah.